The first section is uh, rate of change, which is uh, the rate of change is related to the Qarj uh, um concept of a slope. So uh, when we talk about, uh, first of all, average rate of change, average speed, Average speed will be actually. Let's go ahead and say uh, let let f of x uh, be um, a distance function. Okay. Where uh, traveled traveled at uh, x time, then what we have is uh, uh, if we have an interval, uh, let's say, of x1 and x2, uh, then uh, the average average will be equal to uh, it's a distance travel over time. Now what we mean by distance travel we used to say in uh, algebra rise over the run meaning f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. So that will be the first uh, thing we need to emphasize on in this section which is the rate of change. So we can see very clearly this is related to uh, algebra definition. Uh, the next uh, thing is we need to take an example to see how that uh, will be applied. So if we look at example 1, uh, we're going to say, um, uh, let's go ahead and have uh, uh, a function which is travel um, from one point to another and it's given to us um, is given to us as f of x is equal x squared and I really want to find the average speed from uh, from 1 to uh, to 2 so when we uh, apply this we we're going to say it's f of 2 minus f of 1 because that's the definition divided by 2 minus 1. Now when f of 2 replacing x by 2 so it's going to be 2 squared minus 1 squared and 2 minus 1 is just 1. So then it's uh, 4 minus 1 which is basically a, a 3. So the average speed right here uh, if it is given in feet then we'll go ahead and say uh, feet and the time is second so feet per second and so on so that will be the average um, rate of change of uh, this uh, I think so let's go ahead and take also another example on this one um, <coughs> So we can call it average rate of uh, change or we can call it a speed. So speed is the same thing as an average rate of change. So what we're saying, uh, uh, what we're saying that uh, like if I have a curve, let's say that we have uh, a curve right here uh, and uh, that curve, if I want to look for a two point on the curve, and when I do what we call is the average rate of change, I'm looking again at the right here. You can see very clearly uh, this is the change in x and that's the change in y. So that what we call is this is the average rate of change going from point A to point B, which is exactly the same definition, nothing, uh, not uh, much of a different on that. So now um, the the question is then uh, when we dealt with the average rate of change I just have to remember this is basically a slow form. Uh, let's go ahead and take another example so let's call it example 2. Uh, let's go ahead and take a function so we're going to say f of t 
is equal cotangent t. And let's go ahead and have it on the interval of um, pi over 6 to uh, pi over pi over 2. So when I look at this one, so basically what I'm going to say, the average right here, again, is equal f of the second point, which is pi over 2, minus f of the first point, which is pi over 6. And we will go to the denominator and we'll subtract the second number minus the first number. So now I need to find out what's... Uh, what's the cotangent of pi over 2. So now the best thing is to do is to go ahead and ask ourselves pi over 2 is 90. And uh, from there, we can go ahead and find out all the points necessary for this one. So let's go ahead and uh, say um, if we look at 90, uh, 90 right here, like if I don't have a calculator, 90 is right here the uh, x value is 0 and the y value is 1. So when when I look at the cotangent, uh, cotangent, if you think about it, it's actually x over y. Uh, so x is 0 over y, which is 1, which equal to 0. So it's very clearly cotangent of pi over 2 is 0. Now we're looking at uh, pi over 6. Pi over 6 is 30 degree. So if I want to explain it uh, over here, uh, 30 degree is right here. Opposite of 30 is always 1. This is square root of 3, and that's 2. So if I'm, again, I'm looking at the cotangent, remember it's uh, an x over y. So then it's going to be square root of 3 over 1. So now we divide, and uh, I need to actually uh, uh, subtract those two fractions common denominator is 6 and the first number need to be multiplied by a 3 to get the 6 therefore it's going to be 3 pi minus pi so now if I continue from that point in the numerator we have a square root of a 3 but it's a negative but in the denominator uh, 3 pi minus uh, pi which is pi over 6 and to simplify this one farther that will be negative square root of 3 over pi and we have a 6 in the front because actually when you uh, divide pi over 6 you change it to multiplication and you flip the number so that's another example on the uh, average rate of change now, from that point on, uh, we look and see what is the instantaneous rate of change. Uh, so actually, the more the point gets closer um, to the uh, each other, then what we will end up with, with actually is going to be more like a tangent to the curve. So if we have any curve right here, uh, again, if we're doing two point, that will be an average because that will be from point A to point B. But if we're actually, we're get those points getting closer and closer to each other, so it's touching the graph at exactly one point, then that become a more like a tangent to the curve. So that's tangent at A. This is going to be more like secant or actually we call it more like an average more like definition of a, a slope so the, uh, there are like two different uh, line we're dealing with so let's go ahead and see if we can actually uh, find the slope of a tangent line definition exactly the same except instead of giving uh, a component we'll just deal with it as a um, as an uh, as an a change in the value. So let's see again the example on the top which is given to us f of x is equal x squared and um, and I know this line going through the point 2 4. Now keep in mind before I gave you the interval uh, this is right here 
is a specific point. So we're going to use a similar idea. We're going to say, um, again, uh, the slope of a secant or the secant line is going to be, again, the change in y over the change in x, which is equal uh, f of 2 plus h, because it changed, we don't know how much it will change, minus the original point, which is given to us f of 2, and we divide by just h. h is a change from that point to reach that h. So now, what do we have over here? This is will be uh, 2 plus h squared minus 2 squared, and then we divide everything by h. Now, we need to simplify. 2 squared is 4, plus 2 times 2 is 4 times h, plus h squared minus 4, and we divide everything by h. Uh, notice what will happen, that uh, 4 and 4 cancel out. And if we write what we have, 4h plus h squared over h, one of those h cancel out, so we have 4 plus h over nothing. So then, uh, as you can see, this will be your actually uh, a slope of a secant line. And, and we know that h actually will get closer and closer to zero because what happened to the uh, two point? They get closer to each other, so we will know toward the end the slope of that line will be equal to or to 4 if we replace h by the, by the 0. Now, um, again, in algebra we learn that whenever we find an equation of the line, we always also find, uh, whenever we find the slope, we always find the equation of a line. Um, so now, um, let's see. Um, Let's go ahead and see, um, I want to find the equation of a line, and for us, uh, uh, that's a good accomplishment if we can find the equation of a line for um, f of x is equal to, uh, let's go ahead and say, um, x squared minus 5 uh, at the point, or uh, at the point right here, um, 2 comma negative 1. So then first, what I will need, I need to find the slope of a secant. So I'm going to say change in y over change in x. That will be f. Take the first point of the, um, the first point right here, which is 2. Put it right here, but then add h to it. So we're still going to say plus h minus f of 2. And that's the same as the point we have right here. This is exactly the same. Um, and then we divide everything by h. So we'll go ahead and replace this in the function. So we have 2 plus h squared minus 5 minus, now if, now remember, if this is x, this is, a, if that's a 2, that's f of 2. So keep in mind, uh, f of 2 will be equal negative 1, and then we divide by h. Let's go ahead and simplify it so we'll know what's our slope. Again, this is 4 plus 4h plus h squared minus 5 and plus 1. And uh, as you can see over h, so uh, for cancellation, this and this will go away. 1h cancel, and that will be 4 plus h whatsoever left. That's the slope. But if I want to replace h by 0, as h approach 0, uh, then uh, the slope is equal to 4. Now, let's go ahead and see. I have a slope is equal to 4, and I have a point is equal to comma negative 1. Therefore, my equation, which is y minus y1, which equal m x minus x1. Now let's go ahead and do the replacement of each one. So this is your x1, 
this is your y1 and we already have the slope so then we will have y y minus minus 1 which equal to your slope which is 4 x minus 2 so 4 x minus 8 on this side and that's equal to y plus 1 so if we subtract 1 then the equation of your uh, tangent line y equal 4x minus 9. So we, we can see very clearly that's uh, the equation of the tangent line. So now what's the difference between what we did before, which is the speed, and then what we're doing now, which is called instantaneous velocity. So we said the speed is basically uh, which is equal average rate and that's basically the uh, you can say the change in y over change in x which equal f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1 and usually it's given to you on a specific interval we can call this interval x1 x1 and x2. Now, with the speed, with the with the instantaneous, or actually the so let's go ahead and call it instantaneous instantaneous velocity. Okay. So when we say instantaneous velocity, then what we're saying we're going to take the limit as h approaches 0. Notice what we did before. We replace h by 0. Of what? Of whatever we have on the top, which is the average rate of change. So we're going to say the limit of what? Of um, you can, you, We can still um, say that as f uh, change in y uh, or f f of a plus h minus f of a and we divide that by by h so instantaneous that will lead to that specific number <clears throat> on the graph it should be a little bit easy to see if we can find uh, the equation so that I should cover mainly the idea in this section which is section um, section 2.1